Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've got a roadmap update for you today, more of a statement on the future of roadmap updates actually. Some updates and new patches with Alpha 3.18 and it's officially Luminalia today. So there's loads of gifts that have been given out that you can still pick up if you want them and they're all usable in game, some of which are absolutely fantastic. Let's check out Cloud Imperium's roadmap roundup post. As mentioned earlier this week in This Week in Star Citizen, Alpha 3.18 is now targeting early 2023 for release to the live servers. This is now reflected on 3.18's release view column. No other significant changes to report this week on the roadmap. Our first roadmap update of the year will be on the 8th of February. This update will include the extension of both upstream and downstream teams schedules further into 2023 as well as the addition of features into the 3.19 column. Clan Imperium's wording is very important there because it doesn't appear that they're going to be talking much about the 4.0 column. So the most likely thing is that we're going to get the first two quarters of 2023 sort of um, conveyed to us and that 3.19 will be in the second quarter, end of second quarter. But what about 3.18? Well, it looks like Cloud Imperium are trying to get ready for a release to open PTU for Friday. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the test servers, the PTU servers, will be open to any backer of the game that wants to try them. Now, it's possible that they might not make that, but it does look like it's very likely that they will just open up the PTU. So yes, most Cloud Imperium staff go on holiday um, after work Friday until the new year. But there is also a skeleton crew that will be working and some overtimers as far as I understand it. So open PTU does not have to be in the same state as a live release would be. Basically, Cloud Imperium have said this time around, we do not want to release 3.18 to live just before we go on holiday because it wouldn't be ready, it would be buggy, and it wouldn't be in a, in a state that we would consider good enough for live. I am excited to see the roadmap update in February. Like, that roadmap update should set the tone for the year. And Cloud and Pyram have also said that basically they want their own devs to know a bit more about where their work fits into the puzzle and sort of give it a bit of greater context for it. So um, I'm hoping that Cloud and Pyram evolve some of the sort of information they start giving to us. We get a bit more, a uh, bit more context for that. 2022 was unfortunately characterized by delays to Alpha 3.18. Cloud and Pyram could help backers forget about that by having a strong early 2023 and having the end of year characterized by a 4.0 release. There is a physical citizen con event planned for 2023. 2022 was the record breaking year of funding for Star Citizen. It smashed past $110 million in funding just in 2022 and 2023 could make even more. We've also had a new wave one PTU patch for 3.18, 3.18.0s. Uh, it's still wave one. It's still on the US servers only, which um, is a bit of a problem. So the, the current sort of testing is a, a smallish group of players um, and content creators, concierge and subscribers. All of that together is actually um, a little bit more than those servers can handle because basically Canon Pyramid have opened it up to only a few servers and they're US region only. You can obviously connect to them if you're in the EU or wherever else, but you're going to have a lot more lag than you would otherwise have. Um, there's a load of testing data that Clan Imperium are gathering and they sort of apparently want this testing environment to be specifically like this before opening it up to open PTU. So the most recent patch added um, multi-tools and attachments to Grimhex shops. I need to check to see if they've added the multi-tool attachments to Shubin at Microtech as well. Um, there are a load of bug fixes, no respawn transition screens um, have been fixed, um, players not being able to return to the front end after dismissing a, a disconnection error. There were numerous sections of interior geometry protruding through the exterior of the Corsair. The press X to respawn prompt remained on screen post respawn, and so that's all sorted. Uh, they fixed four client crashes and then an additional 12 server crashes. There are a load of known issues still though. So ship and vehicles can disappear from a player's um, ASOP terminal after destruction. A retrieved ship delivered to a docking port will be missing collisions. That's again not ideal. Uh, items appear to not be removed when players sell them. Um, so they can just keep on selling them if they keep on going back. Uh, walking on the hills near Whistler's Crypt can potentially kill or wound players. Equipped gear can be lost when a player dies in an armistice zone. Scanning is not showing advanced statistics and details. Elevator doors open mid-transit. At least elevators are sort of kind of working. 
sometimes. Uh, the Merlin will not undock from the Constellation. The Mercury Star Runner can only hold a 6 SU of cargo. The Reclaimer has no elevator interaction on the rear. Uh, there is a hitbox desync issue with ships and vehicles. Loot boxes load infinitely when you're trying to sort of um, get into them. Uh, elevators and trams are jittery during transit of players um, and transit of just themselves. Uh, it is possible for the vehicle hard to vanish when the players are uh, flying around and in combat. Multi tools say healing, regardless of what attachment you've got equipped. Uh, a couple of NPC spawning issues for missions are still there. Loot boxes can also sort of disappear um, when you're sort of walking towards them or after opening them. There are still issues with the servers being full sometimes uh, due to the small amount of concentrated servers in the US. This is making Wave 1 PTU hard for me to get footage and the sort of public transport and elevator issues, they're pretty annoying. So all these problems largely to do with persistent entity streaming and the fact, you know, it's a new patch they've just put on the PTU in a very sort of enclosed environment, but not in a good way. They are, there is basically overloading going on here just with the amount of players that are trying to get on. Expect to see another build or two today and tomorrow, um, even if Cloud Imperium are pushing for open PTU for Friday or the weekend. Um, I would expect to see um, them try and get out multiple uh, PTU patches a day just to see if they can get a release candidate and uh, as many of those sort of bugs fixed. Luminalia! It is Luminalia day today and there's been loads of gifts that Cloud Imperium have been giving away each day of Luminalia. Um, you can pick those up from the Luminalia calendar um, if you haven't already on the RSO website so um and you can you've got until like january 10th to pick them up i believe as well so don't worry too much if you haven't grabbed them yet um so far we've had um xmas clothing skins for the 100 avenger nomad um ships there as well so a couple of uh, skins for each of those uh, there's uh, jumpsuits christmasy jumpsuits a sextant um but the current sort of most cool things for me are the Pico and Star Wars plush, the sort of Christmassy outfits for them. Because I do like these things. I think they're going to be silly and cool to just sort of place around in your ships or hangars or whatever in the future. But also there have been a set of FPS weapons, a shotgun, sniper, SMG and LMG with Luminalia colorings. Now these, these are really cool. They get added to your accounts and then you have some great FPS weapons to start the game with. There is one more weapon to get on this last main day of Luminalia at 4pm UTC. It's when you're going to start to be able to get that. Um, but yeah, it's a really good set of gear. Shame there was no armor this year. Um, maybe next year. But I think most people are going to be very happy with those those gifts um, because there's no sort of like just pictures of handlebars for the hov quad. Boom! That's it for today's little update with what's happening with 3.18 and Luminalia and all that sort of jazz. I'm really looking forward to... February next year. I know it's uh, a while out, but we've got 3.18 hopefully going to open PTU to keep us engaged until then. We also have Jump Town event starting at 4 p.m. UTC on Friday the 23rd and then running until the 4th of January. That is going to be your last chance to try Jump Town 2.0 before 3.18 releases and we get jump down 2.1 which is significantly bigger but what do you think are we going to have a playable fun open ptu for 3.18 for the rest of the year and uh, moving into january and you can expect 3.18 live to release in january did you like all those luminalia gifts are you um looking forward to that february sort of um roadmap update do you think 23 23 is going to be a fantastic year for Star Citizen and we'll have 4.0 by the end of the year or are you a bit more reserved and well Star Citizen keeps on having patches delayed so pff, who knows what's going to happen whatever your thoughts I'd love to hear from you in the comments below do you have eyes I know I do do you want precise eye and head tracking that's natively supported in Star Citizen for that deep immersion and it just so happens that Toby Eye Tracker 5 has a 20% off sale until the 2nd of January 2023. So go to toby.gg slash boardgamer or follow the links down below to get your discount. Ho ho ho, Merry Nordmus. It's Santa! No, Timmy, it's Father Nordmus. I'm legally distinct and spread NordVPN cheer. Here you go, little Tim. Have some discount on your next NordVPN purchase. Just what you wanted. Go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer. But Santa, we don't want a VPN. I told you, Tim. It's Father Nordmus.
Every month we have a ship giveaway. For December, we are giving away the mighty Drake Corsair Explorer with a Star Citizen game package and lifetime insurance. This no-nonsense explorer can take you and three friends to the limits of adventure around the verse. And although more focused on exploration and expedition, it is a great multi-role mission runner too. Comment on any of my videos during December to be in for a chance of winning that. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please don't forget to like and especially subscribe to the videos, leave comments, and if you feel so inclined, use the join button under my videos and give a little bit each month to help the channel. It really, really does help. Or you can even become a Patreon or donate. Check out all the links below. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great time in the verse.